And what in the world is going on here? Lazovic already with an edge is black. This is like a, a reverse Sveshnikov gone wild uh-huh. X-rated edition. I was going to say, let me tell you what's going on here. Hikaru Nakamura is much worse, and I'm still trying to count the pawns. This is the kind of position that you would want to get, uh, and you're at least up a pawn. You've got something to suffer for, but here, White isn't even up a pawn. How did this happen in 12 moves, and how did this get so bad? And moreover, Lazovic is threatening a crushing check on F3, Danny. He's also threatening the move knight to B3, so... Hikaru's oh, only oh move here might be, might be bishop to e2. I mean, why is borderline lost here? Okay, we have to go to the back cave and do some analysis. He's I'm going to jump right into it. Oh, He's my missed gosh. knight b3. Knight b3 wins the game. Knight b3 is, is lights out. And- knight b3 hits the rook and threatens f2. It doesn't matter whether you take it or not. What exactly. in the world is happening here? Knight b3 is essentially like- lights out. Hikaru's coffee hasn't kicked in yet, or he needs to turn off the pineapple behind him to get rid of the glare because he's clearly not seeing the board in the way that Hikaru Nakamura normally does. Again, I'm going to analyze. We have to back up and just see how we got here, Don. It was in English to start for Hikaru. E5, A3. Okay. This is already kind of designed to sort of flip colors. You have this reversed Sicilian kind of idea for white with the with the C4 E5 dynamic. But shout out when you see something weird. Okay, already D3. D3 okay. instead of D4. That's normally the way you undermine the knight here, right? Yeah, D4 is the main move, and it leads to this very double-edged endgame. E takes D4, bishop takes out four, D takes C3. I've seen this line before. Um, yeah. And White trades on D8, and maybe Hikaru didn't want to get an end game this quickly. But then, you know, why are you going into this line? Knight B3, by the way, has been found. Dennis Lazovic oh wins gosh. Hikaru's rook in the corner. But your point is well taken, Danny. After Bishop G4, Dennis just plays this in a very Soviet schoolboy way. Just trade on F3, get the D4 square, and this is just an awful position just, for Nakamura. This is like. All the things you try to avoid when you're when you're on the black side of the Sicilian in these Sveshnikov structures, because again, the Sveshnikov for for black, I'll say, only really works by you know the fact that you're giving up such huge positional weaknesses. It only works because of the other dynamic compensating factors that black gets. And so, if you're just giving, in this case, giving black all of these tempi. It's a nightmare to deal with, and black is just already completely dominating on the dark squares. Normally, again, that's the light squares if we were to reverse colors in a Sveshnikov. And Hikaru just goes into the fray, completely blundering knight to b3. And look at that. It's a brilliant symbol for those of us who do our game review. And Hikaru has sacrificed the rook on a1. This is wow. absolutely insane, Danya. So, sacrifice is a pretty flattering way of putting it. It's, it's how I used to <laughs> yeah. explain, you know, to my coach when I would blunder a piece <laughs> in one move. And I would start, even during the game, I would already start rehearsing the stories. I sacrificed it, and okay, the sacrifice didn't work out. No, Hikaru is simply down a rook here. He has to find a way to generate some counterplay. And the game is not over. He can put a knight on d5, Danny. He can push b2, b4. And he's going to try to muddy the waters. He's going to try to make Dennis Lazovic nervous. But right now, I don't even see a way for White to win that knight. He goes queen h5. Okay, but black can just castle kingside. And the queen on h5 is a complete paper tiger. And the knight on a1 is essentially going to evacuate through b3. I mean, barring a miracle, this game is over. (laughs) Yeah, this is one of those things that just blows your mind. And it does show that even at the highest levels, occasionally opening prep can go wrong and and even just opening understanding, right? Not necessarily appreciating the dangers if you don't go for the main line, which again, to remind everybody, we don't need analysis, but to just quickly show that the only real move here for White is D4 into this forcing reverse Feshnikov kind of endgame. Hikaru played D3 and the wheels have just been coming off ever since. I... Uh, I, I, I'm, my mind is blown. Yeah, this is, you don't see this every day. You don't see this at all uh, in Hikaru Nakamura's practice. That's why we're so shocked. And of course the game is not over. And I would caution people against, uh, against counting Hikaru out. I mean, how many of these impossible comebacks have we seen? This is the Hikaru effect in a nutshell. 
no matter who's sitting in front of him, whether it's someone as experienced as Dennis Lazovic or Magnus Carlsen, people get really nervous when they sense that they're very close to defeating Hikaru in a big game. But what a big game this would be. Barring a crazy miracle, Danny, a victory with Black over Hikaru in game one, that would really put Hikaru's back against the wall, especially because Dennis is so solid to the white pieces. He's a D4 player. He's really, yeah. really hard to beat on demand. So I'm I'm shocked. I'm shocked at this turn of events. We're only 17 moves in, and Hikaru's missing a rook on A1. Yeah, there's it's literally you, okay. you kind of you kind of tune in and you tune in and you go, wait, what? How did we get this position here? Uh, Hikaru shaking his head even further. He understands that Bishop F5 just doesn't work after G6. Like honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Hikaru resigned here. You can literally see the the game the game status graph below there showing that with D3. Things first started going wrong, but then Bishop H3, and uh, and things just fell apart. Okay, Hikaru is not going to resign. He plays Queen to G4, but this is a plus five advantage for Black, and then we're not even on move twenty. Not I something mean, you see every day. Black is literally up a rook for no compensation, and the only threat that White has here is Bishop takes E6, and then Queen takes E6 check. And even if that happens, it's not the end of the world for Black. But the most clinical move here is knight e6, back to g7, drop the knight back, retreat it to safety. And if white plays the move bishop to g5, Danny, you could respond with f6. And actually, in that particular instance, both of white's bishops are hanging. So we're yeah. literally two or three accurate moves away from resignation here. But this is sometimes where Hikaru's opponents tend to slip up when they're winning and they sense that they're, they're oh so close. Here, it's really important for Dennis to keep his composure and not kind of let Hikaru back in the game, not let Hikaru keep extending this game and putting pressure on his clock. 100%. Uh, I, I'm i guessing that Lazovic is up to the task. Speaking as someone who at one point was not up to the task, a funny, funny clip that exists somewhere on the internet, I want to rook against Hikaru in some tournament long ago. Uh, a streamer's event. It was either a title Tuesday or arena Kings. And I lost that game. So I have lost up a rook to Hikaru, <laughs> but um, <laughs> who has, <it? laughs> I don't think, I don't think Laz. And I know I'm not alone in that. A lot of people have, but uh, I don't think Lazovic will be someone who, who stumbles to that degree. Uh, you point out knight G seven, which is a very clear move to find. Cause it also just unpins the pawn. So it's both a logical move that, that puts the knight who's currently attacked to safety and immediately renews the threat of taking the bishop. Um, at this point, okay. I will be surprised if this game is still going after move 25. I think Hikaru will probably see great defense, throw in the towel, and try to clear his head for the all-out attempt to win his black and force Armageddon. It's his only choice at yeah. this point. And he I don't know. I mean, Dennis has been thinking now for quite a while. I'm looking over at his clock, King H8. I don't love that move. I don't understand why knight g7 wasn't played. That was a really easy move. Okay, now bishop well, takes I, e6, f takes e6, and bishop g5, and maybe you could try to stir the pot a little bit. I, I Okay, I hear you, but again, I think you're suffering from a little bit of Hikaru bias-itis. There's an affliction yeah. for it. You can see a doctor about it if you really <laughs> want, to, want to get that taken care of. I actually love king h8 from a practical perspective. I just forced a trade off the board. You attack my queen. I'm going to play queen to d7. And you're okay. If I play queen d7, you can have take six. a one, but then I then I get f2. That's oh. true, queen d7. But queen d7, I will play knight to f6. And queen it's g7 just a and... lit. And the queen takes c6. I guess then you can move your knight out of a1. Okay, it's gonna it's on the board. Yes, you're queen right. Of course, is completely winning. Black black saves the knight, and in the end, you're down a rook. <laughs> like that, that's yes. a rook. I can't argue ever, with that. Have you ever it seen is, a Levy Rosman video? That's a rook. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to spare you the screaming. And bishop f6 check, simply king g8 was a dead end. So Hikaru tries knight f6, still fighting. And not only am I afflicted with Hikaru I, bias itis, but it's just I'm tra I'm traumatized. It's, I have been on the receiving end of so many of these completely winning positions. You think that there is no way. This is not the kind of game where Hikaru is going to pull out a comeback. And then suddenly, you start getting low on time, your fingers turn to thumbs, your hands start shaking, and <laughs> you find 
essentially the only way, the only way, Borknik and I always joke about this, we find the only way to make things complicated against Hikaru. Okay, he succeeded in making this a little bit dicey. I would play knight c2. Okay, maybe knight d7 can be tried. Still going, still trying, sure. still fighting. I would play knight d4, give up the pawn. I mean, I don't know, maybe even just save my bishop. I just want to or get bishop all my d6. pieces in the game and, and remind him that I'm that I'm up a rook if I'm Dennis Lazovic. Probably the biggest mistake you can make, as you said, is to continue to try to be perfect and get yourself down to under a minute. I think as long as he plays quickly and has time on the clock, yeah. Hikaru's opening mistakes will come back to haunt him. But look at this. Hikaru just continues to play fast. It this doesn't is, matter. He's just going to keep going. But knight d4, okay, h5, and black should win. If if this goes down as a Hikaru comeback, I I will have literally seen it all at this point. I'm getting I'm getting old. It's been 16 years here for the old man in chess.com. I just I don't know that I need to stick around after this. If Hikaru comes back and wins this game, oh. like, no, this was too much. Insane. This was just a full rook. The problem was that this was literally a full rook with no compensation, and this knight b3 shot. That is just not the kind of tactical sequence that Hikaru misses every day. Okay, Lazovic is too experienced of a blitz player, I think, to let this one slip. Bishop h6 yeah. might be tried, but okay, queen f7, black is completely winning. No, Lazovic has this completely under control at this point. I think Hikaru is smart not to play bishop h6 because his his he understands that no material makes a difference here. The only thing that will help is keeping this thing as confusing as possible. But here comes, I mean, even knight f3, if we want to just like force more pieces off the board, another trade. Yes. I mean, not to say that we can't recommend a lot of moves. Okay, like queen, F7, queen e6 makes sense because I think he wants to double rooks. This will be straightforward. Probably okay. we should switch. What? Go ahead. No, I'm I'm just sort of again. I, I guess I'm just traumatized. But yes, I agree. Probably Lazovic has this in his pocket. He'll play c5. He'll finish this one off. You got to go see the final position. Lazovic did get the job done with Black. If you're just tuning in, what a wild, what a wild game this was. Hikaru Nakamura blundering early out of the opening.